Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our application and scholarship webinar. Uh, it's very nice to see that so many of you have registered and seem to be interested in yeah, getting to know more about studying at the University of Gothenburg. Um, I'm Matthias. Uh, I'm a communications officer at the university and today I'm joined by three of our international students, Carlo, Thelma and Varsha. And uh, yeah, we also have with us some more staff from the university, Ida and Janke. So um, yeah, today we will talk a little about how to apply to the university, where you can apply, uh, show you important deadlines and the most important information that you should think of while preparing your application. And we will also talk about tuition fees as well as scholarship opportunities and provide you with some useful tips. So uh, we will start off with some basics about the university, should this be your first webinar with us or the first time you hear from us directly. And yeah, as I just said, we will present to you the application process, talk about tuition fees, scholarships, and at the end, there will be a Q&A session where you can ask questions. Uh, please note that we won't be able to answer any of your questions beforehand, so please just wait with your questions until the end uh, or just be aware that we might not be able to answer your questions yet if you write them during our presentation. So for those of you that haven't attended maybe any previous webinars or haven't gotten to know us that well yet, uh, let us just start off with some information about the University of Gothenburg. <clears throat> So the university was first established as um, the Gothenburg University College in 1891. So it is more than 130 years old and has since then turned into one of Sweden's most popular and one of Northern Europe's most comprehensive universities. And today we are very proud to have a long tradition of internationally recognized research and groundbreaking achievements. And at the university, we embrace free thinking and collaborative environments where students and academic staff come together and explore new perspectives together. Today, the university has around 54,000 students, making it one of Sweden's biggest universities, and around 10 to 15 percent of these are international students. And we offer nine different international programs on bachelor's level and around 80 international master's programs. So how can you apply to these programs? Let's just get, uh, yeah, let's get straight to it. Um, here you can see the timeline for the current international application round for the autumn semester starting in 2024. Uh, the application period for that is open right now as we are in December. And to apply to the University of Gothenburg, you submit your application online through universityadmissions.se, where you can apply to all Sw <coughs> Swedish universities, uh, as it is the central platform to apply for uh, university studies in Sweden. And it is possible to apply for up to four master programs or up to eight bachelor's programs in your application. And on universityadmissions.se, the website, you create an account and then you find and select the program or the programs that you want to apply for. And when creating and submitting an application, it is important to know that you also must rank and prioritize the programs that you have selected, as you can only be admitted to one program. And the deadline uh, to submit your application, uh, including the ranking, if you apply for multiple programs, is January 15th. And after this deadline, you have until February the 1st to submit your supporting documents for your application. Um, and this means that it is possible to submit any documentation that you might need for your application after the application deadline of 15th of January. But of course, it's also possible uh, to submit your application as well as all of your supporting documents before the deadline. And uh, after you have submitted your application and your application documents, you will be notified about your admission result on the 21st of March, uh, if you have applied for master studies, 
or uh, on the 11th of April if you have applied for bachelor studies. So let's also talk a little bit about entry requirements uh, in, that you need to fulfill in order to be eligible for our programs. Uh, there are both general entry requirements that apply generally um, for when you want to apply for a program in Sweden, and then there are program specific requirements that depend on the program that you are applying for. So if we talk about general requirements for master's level, it means that you need to have a bachelor's degree from an internationally recognized university. If you are in the final year of your bachelor studies, for example, it is also uh, possible for you to apply and to be accepted. However, in that case, uh, you would be conditionally admitted, which means that you need to finish your bachelor's degree in time before uh, your master's starts and that you need to hand in your bachelor's degree certificates before you start your master's. And if you are applying for a bachelor's degree, you need to have successfully completed upper secondary, um, which means high school education. And uh, depending on what country you are from or what country you have previously studied in, uh, there might be uh, country specific instructions on what documentation and what type of degrees and certification is accepted for your application. And um, you can find detailed information on this, including a list uh, of countries um, on universityadmissions.se. And then uh, there are also requirements that depend on the program that you want to apply for. Quite commonly, that could be that you need to have, for example, previous credits in a certain study area. If, if you want to study a certain subject, it might be a pre-requirement. Uh, or that you have done a thesis or a degree project or something similar with a certain amount of credits. Um, it might also be that you have to submit certain documents that will be relevant for uh, your admission, such as, for example, a CV, a statement of intent, or similar. But as it says here, uh, these are program specific requirements. So it's always best to check on our website for each specific program what is required for your application. And uh, what's also important to know here is that if you apply for a program within the field of fine arts and music, there are also different uh, application period dates and deadlines and different documentation requirements. But um, information about these deadlines can also be found on the specific program pages on our website. And in order to be eligible for our programs, you also need to meet certain English language requirements. And uh, there are different ways of, of meeting these requirements, for example, through uh, certain um, upper secondary studies, for example, if you have studied high school in the US or if you've studied English uh, in high school on a certain level or uh, through um, previous university studies, for example, a bachelor's degree that was taught in English, um, or you can also meet the requirement through an internationally recognized English test. Um, and you can see some examples of um, test score requirements uh, of um, very uh, common English tests here on the screen. And here again, it's uh, very important to note that there is country specific information on universityadmissions.se on how you can meet the English language requirement through, for example, studies in your country of origin or countries that you have studied in. And on university admissions, you can also find uh, detailed information on what kind of English tests are accepted. So saying that, this is what the platform looks like. And as it's now been said multiple times, this is where you submit your application. And here you can also find lots of information regarding what documentation you should submit, as well as an overview for what applies to your previous country of study with detailed information. So this is your uh, yeah, platform uh, for your application. 
and you can find step-by-step -step instructions on how to submit an application for master's studies, bachelor studies, you can find an overview of all important dates and deadlines, and then also an overview of specific information on uh, the country of origin or the country that you have previously studied in, as you can see here uh, in those two screenshots on the screen. So who might know better uh, how to navigate a university application than our current students? Uh, they have successfully applied to the university and maybe they have um, some tips for you. Um, hello, uh, my name is Varsha and I'm from Nepal. So currently I'm doing my master's in biology here at the University of Gothenburg. Uh, so some of my tips would be to uh, take care when you uh, rank your universities because uh, the university that you keep uh, that you keep in your first priority, you'll be eligible for the scholarship for the university scholarship as well. For example, if you keep University of Gothenburg as your first priority, then you'll be also eligible for uh, the university scholarship as well. Uh, and as Matya said, uh, you should also keep in mind different deadlines for applic for sending in your applications, for uh, submitting your documents. Uh, talking about documents. Uh, in my case, uh, because I had few documents that were uh, in my native language in Nepali, so I had to get them translated in English. So you should keep that in mind as well. And the other thing was uh, actually my name and my citizenship is a little different uh, and in my passport. Uh, it's a diff it's a little different. So I had to also make a document, prepare a document from the local government uh, indicating that these two people are the same uh, person. So you should also keep that in mind. If you need that, you should do that as well so that it's easier in future uh, to identify if the documents belong to the same person, the academy documents belong to the same person or not. Um, the other thing was uh, about the English language scores. Uh, I myself uh, sent in my TOEFL scores and for that uh, you don't have to send in your TOEFL scores to different universities separately I guess. Uh, I sent my TOEFL scores to Swedish Council of, for Higher Education once so that's it you don't have to send in your English language scores to different Swedish universities separately. Uh, so yeah, that's it. So keep in mind all the deadlines. Uh, so as Matthias said, your deadline for application uh, submission is 15 January. And so you need to prioritize, you need to uh, come up with your priority list by 15 January. And then you you have your uh, document, document other document submission deadline till 1st of February. So please keep that in mind. And uh, one more thing about motivation letter. Uh, I don't. I did not have to submit any motivation letter of any kind for my master's program, but you might have to do so depending on what program you are going for. So in your motivation letters, or it it might also be some questions you have to fill in. So please keep in mind the things that you are more uh, are you uh, things that you are more interested in, so that it can also be counted in to see if you're eligible for that program or not. So so just keep in mind uh, some of these points. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, maybe I can go in next. Yeah, hello. Um, I have a long name, but you can call me uh, Carlo, and I'm from the Philippines. I'm a second year student for the Master in International Administration and Global Governance Program. So I think my colleague Varsha has um, said some of the, uh, our points, but I would like to add in and emphasize that you have to check if you're qualified. So besides looking into the qualifications described in the program website, you also have to check the country specific instructions from the university admissions. So as Matthias have said earlier, you have to check um, based on your um, where your uh, credentials are coming from. You have to base that in the country specific instructions because there might be uh, like additional requirements 
uh, needed if you or specific methods to send in your documents, uh, depending on where where you got your qualifications. And of course, um, as stated earlier, have a checklist of um, the documents of the required documents. Farsh has already said that. And for in my case, I wrote a motivation letter for this program for the international administration program. I guess my tip for that will be is highlight what you can contribute to the class so and what you want to learn so and it can also help you if you can specify what spe specific research interests you are you have and which specific faculty you want to work with so that's what i did with my um motivation letter and also maybe you can also check if the your the plan uh, if the program that you're planning to apply to is competitive so um they have this website in sweden which is uh, a dagning statistic um maybe i can set it in the chat matthias right oh yeah oh yeah the link and uh, it's in swedish but if you could just look um translate the website um maybe you could uh check if your program is very competitive so we can offer you some insight on that so that's on me. That's for me. Okay. Um, I think maybe I can come in at this point uh, just to build up on what my colleagues have said. So first of all, I am Thelma Aritha Kaleo. I am from Malawi, um, Africa, and I am here studying a master's degree in uh, gendering practices. So I think one thing that I can highlight to just build up on my uh, what my colleagues have said is if you're really interested to study uh, on a scholarship, you need to be consistent in terms of uh, showing uh, what your career goals are and where you're coming from. I'll give an example that if you're looking for a particular business related programs, how is that feeding into your future goals and how is that feeding in uh, from your previous studies so that it shouldn't be overlapping. And this can also guide you better in terms of ranking your uh, program studies in terms of your search because it can also help you to narrow down exactly on your specific interest and at the same time it can also help you to write your motivation like what is it that you have been lacking from your previous studies what are the challenges that you have faced in the course of your work or in the course of your surrounding your society that you feel like the studies or the studies that you are, you are aspiring for can help you to uh, get where you want to be uh, so, yeah, you just need to prove that you're consistent based on where you're coming from, where you are currently, and what exactly you want to achieve in terms of your career aspirations. Yeah, I think those are the main tips that we can give. More of it, we can uh, respond in the Q&A. So over to you again, Matthias. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much. Um, so now next up, we have uh, Jank, yeah, who... Uh, can share a little bit of information about tuition fees and scholarships. Thank you, Matthias. Um, the tuition, I, my name is Jan, and I will tell something about the scholarship, uh, scholarship and tuition fees. It's good to know that the tuition fees on the university uh, varies a bit uh, for each program, uh, but you can find them on the web page of the program and there you can see the total cost of the program, but also the first payment that you have to do. Um, and to, it's important that when to secure your admission offer, uh, you have to pay the tuition fees in time and that's the, you have to pay for the first uh, semester of your studies. So you don't have to pay the whole um, amount at one time. Um, the tuition fees varies from maybe like 45,000 to at the most uh, 286,000 per semester, but the most expensive ones are only in the art and music uh, department. Uh, most um, um, tuition fees are between 45 and 60,000 uh, per semester, so that's good to know. Um, if you have a, if you are a citizen from the European Union or from uh, the Nordic countries or Switzerland, you don't have to pay tuition fees. And if you're not sure if you have to pay tuition fees or not, you can find information on our website 
understudy and apply and there's tuition fees exactly all the requirements and who has to pay and if you still have questions about it after that there's also an email um, and maybe it can come up also in um, in the q a later but it's for, quite clear uh, written on our website um you have like i said you have to pay the tuition fees in time if you're admitted to the program the deadline for the first uh, tuition fee payment is the first of may uh, so that is important that your um, um, tuition fees has come in, your payment. Um, after you have been admitted to the program, you will receive an email with the uh, payment instructions. Um, and we advise that you pay with card if possible, because if in case you would not be able to come, uh, it is much easier with a refund. So we really advise you to pay with cards. I will continue with the scholarships. Uh, at the University of Gothenburg, we have um, a very generous uh, scholarship. Um, it is the Axelada scholarship um, that we have, and that scholarship is specific for the university. And it is a tuition fee waiver scholarship. That means that you don't, if you are awarded with the scholarship, you don't have to pay uh, tuition fees at all. Um, but the, this scholarship does not pay for your cost of living, so you have to think about that, that you have enough um, funds to pay for your stay in Sweden. Um, our, ambition, our ambition is to award uh, one scholarship for, uh, for one student, student on each program. Um, there, all, the only exception is that uh, the programs in the um, arts and uh, music because there will have a total of four uh, scholarships for um, for all those programs but otherwise it's one scholarship per program so it differs a bit because some programs have a lot of um, applicants and some programs have less so it's difficult to say what your chances are but it is good to know that is at least one um, and Another thing is that if you have, uh, if you apply for um, a program that is sustainable, sustainable focused, there are eight programs at the University of Gothenburg that are eligible for this uh, scholarship. Then we have this extra scholarship that is called Axelada Scholarship for Sustainability. So that is extra for those programs, at least two extra scholarships we give totally for these eight programs. But last year we could award eight scholarships uh, specific, specifically uh, for this one. So there's the Axelada Scholarship and the Axelada Scholarship for Sustainability. Sometimes people think it's only the one for sustainability, but that's just not true, it's extra. Um, to be eligible for the scholarship, you have have listed the program as your first priority at the university. So that is very important. Otherwise, uh, you are not eligible for this uh, scholarship. Um, and it's you're also only eligible for the program of your first choice. Even if you have several programs at the University of Gothenburg, there's only a program of your first choice. So that's why it's so important to list it in the right order. Um, it's also important that you paid your application fee uh before the first of february and also have documented um your eligibility for the program by you know putting in all the documents um the students that are eligible that have uh, chosen the right program as the first priority and that have um paid their fee they will receive an email from us uh on the on the 8th of february um and with instructions how to apply for the scholarship if you did not if you're sure you're eligible for the, uh, the scholarship and you did not receive an email then you can uh, check your spam and otherwise you can always send uh, uh, an email to scholarships uh, at gu.se to ask why you didn't and then we can check it but check your spam first if you're sure that you're eligible um, we have another uh, a bit smaller scholarship that is called the Richard Malmsteen uh, sc uh, scholarship and that is only for master students from the um, graduate school and that scholarship covers 25,000 crowns per semester 
uh, totally for four semesters, so totally it is 100,000. So that's also good, but it's a little bit less than the Axelardo scholarship. Um, a very popular scholarship that we have, it's the scholarship from the Swedish Institute. It is called the SI Scholarship for Global Professionals. Um, this is a scholarship that is for uh, not only for the University of Gothenburg, but for all uh, universities in Sweden. And this scholarship is um, a fully funded scholarship. So it pays for the tuition fees, uh, for the cost of living and travel costs to Sweden and back, of course. Um, and it is for only for students that apply for a master's program. Um, and there is a list with countries. Um, if you're a citizen of these countries, you can apply for the scholarship. It's 41 countries. Um, and you can find it on the list from the Swedish uh, Institute. We have uh, on the website from the University of Gothenburg, you can find the link also to the SI scholarship. So not only to uh, the scholar Axelada scholarship, but also the SI scholarship. Back to you, Matthias. All right, thank you so much. Um, and we also we have today with us our uh, international students who are also uh, happen to be scholarship holders. Um, so maybe you have yeah also some tips and insights about um, yeah how things to think of when applying for a scholarship or how you know the application went uh, in your experience. Um, okay, so yeah, to build up on what I previously spoke about, and just to remind you, I'm Thelma Kaliu, I'm from Malawi. Uh, Malawi happens to be one of the um, countries that is among us, the 46 countries eligible for the Swedish Institute Scholarship. Um, so I think building up on being consistent, it's also about how much more are you contributing to the society? How much more are you contributing to um, sustainability in your country? And how much are you taking a leadership role? So it's uh, also a matter of um, learning how far you want to go and how much you can also learn from uh, the sustainability programs that are available um, in Sweden. So I think um, going back to what I said, being consistent, knowing what you want to do, uh, what problems do you want to solve, what is your leadership role um, in everything that you're doing, and that can also help you draft your motivation, whether it's needed for your uh, master's program, for your application for admission, and also for uh, uh, your scholarship. So they go hand in hand. You have to ensure that you are being consistent with your goals, with your career path that you want to take. So yeah, over to you, Carlos. Okay, uh, thank you, Thelma. So um, adding on to what Thelma said, maybe you could also um, answer um, maybe some of the questions that I can, uh, that I will say right now, maybe. Uh, the, uh, first is you have to think of the bottom line of your, um, of your scholarship. So what do you have right now? Your capacity, your network, your past achievements that has contributed to the sustainable development goals? And what is your potential to contribute further to the SDGs in your country or in your region, whether if it's Southeast Asia or Western Eastern Africa and globally, perhaps? And um, with regarding to consistency, as what Thelma had said, you also have to be very specific on what you have achieved and what you have, to, what you plan to do. Okay. And of course, um, put it in context. Um, what does Sweden, because, well, as you might know, uh, the Swedish um, Ministry of Foreign Affairs is funding the Swedish Institute Scholarship. By the way, I'm speaking from my experience as a Swedish Institute Scholar. So um, I guess um, for what I can say is um, putting it in context, since the Swedish Ministry of Foreign Affairs is funding this, maybe you should also research on what are the strategic objectives of Sweden 
uh, with regards to the SDGs. So you could um, relate your um, relate on what you have done to what Sweden wants to do regarding the SDGs. So I, I guess that's those are some of my tips from my part. But yes. All right, great. So that's it for today. Thank you everyone for attending. And hopefully we get to hear um, from some of you either during our upcoming events or maybe next year um, in Gothenburg. So goodbye and take care. <laughs>